Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa as the world continues to battle the COVID-19 and many countries are looking for ways to recover from the pandemic. A new virus is making headlines worldwide. We're talking about monkeypox. Monkeypox, a rare disease that is caused by infection with monkeypox virus, is now thought to be nearing 100 cases in 12 countries around the world and more expected as surveillance is stepped up. The first case of this current outbreak was detected in the United Kingdom on May 7, and so far, infections have been confirmed in, the, in nine European countries, uh, the UK, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, France, and the Netherlands, as well as Italy and Sweden. We also have the United States and Canada, as well as Australia, detecting cases of this virus. Now, although the first case detected in the United Kingdom was linked, believe it or not, to travel to Nigeria, report which reports about 3,000 monkeypox cases a year, according to what we have learned. Uh, subsequent cases have not been tracked to Africa, and this, according to reports, is puzzling many scientists and doctors. What do we need to know about the virus? We're glad to have one of such scientists and doctors, a doctor, uh, joining us this morning on breakfast, Dr. Tunji uh, Mebawondu. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for joining us. All right, all right. Uh, um, so, so is this is this um, a surprise to you? Um, the the way the virus, monkeypox virus, is spreading around the world. When we hear it's 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 akin to it's um, usually found in West and Central Africa. We're seeing in European countries, in in UK, in in Canada, in Australia, and they're saying that the other cases cannot be linked to travel to Nigeria or Africa. Well, uh, it's a study in evolution. It's a curious surprise in a way. Um, because the standard teaching, the standard knowledge about monkeypox is that you see um, it jumps from animal to human, then from human to human, you must have the first contact either with the animal or with human. But what we're seeing uh, recently, um, the, in the past uh, few weeks, we've seen uh, more than 16 cases in up to um, uh, different countries, not 16 countries or more than that, or thereabouts, you know. And interestingly, we are seeing them in countries with no contact with West Africa, the origin of monkeypox. Then the question is that how is this being transmitted now? And we're seeing them especially among the gay people and the men uh, having sex with men. So that is the predominant population where we're seeing them. So it's now, is it now sexually transmitted disease or is it because of intimacy um, during those people that, uh, with those that cause the spread of the monkeypox? Sweden is showing cases of monkeypox for the first time, Belgium, um, Spain, Portugal, a lot of countries. So it's curious. So we, we need to actually interrogate it. And we're seeing clusters in different parts of um, the world. Uh, you cannot link that of um, USA to that of UK. Yes, that of Nigeria, that of UK can link to Nigeria, that of Canada can link to Nigeria, but that of Sweden, you cannot link to Nigeria or link to any West African country where this thing is endemic. So um, we are going to see more of these viruses um, or germs jumping from animals or the wild to humans because climate change and then the fact that uh, we are also encroaching on their, on their natural domains. We are carrying animals, we are cutting down um, grasses, we are cutting down bushes and all those things. So, so we are going to see more increase. And then the better prepared we are for this, uh, um, you know, the better for us in a way. Uh, Nigeria, of course, since 2017, we've seen more than 500 cases of monkeypox diagnosed. This year alone, we've seen as much as 50, you know, from January to now. So it's something we should take seriously because these virus evolve. They change their shape, they change their form. And we don't want a virus that then mutates and then gives us another problem. But for monkeypox, we shouldn't entertain the fear we had with COVID that it might lead to a lockdown. No, it's most unlikely to lead to lockdown. It's a different DNA virus, and then similar to smallpox, but it does not have the, the kind of um, um, aggression of smallpox. So, but at the same time, we have to also be vigilant and ensure that uh, this thing doesn't get this far further than this. All right, uh, Dr. Tui, not Dr. Tui, I apologize for the mm -hmm. earlier mix up. All right, so um, um, quickly, let's get to the fundamental, uh, let's understand what we need to know about monkeypox because you talked about. Um, you know, those gay men and all of that and attracted it. But what is monkeypox and how, you know, 
is it uh, gotten? Because we also know that it feels like it's an African situation. That's that's a stereotype with it. But we'd like to hear from you as an expert. Uh, in 1958, uh, a Danish man was doing an experiment in DR Congo and then uh, saw the outbreak of this pox in a, in, a, in a laboratory animal. It wasn't until 1970 that the, we witnessed the first case in human when a child was attacked. So it's actually um, a, a DNA virus, you know, and like similar to smallpox virus. And then um, the normal reservoir of this virus are actually rodents and monkey, but it's because of human contact, it jumps to human. When it jumps to human, the incubation period, you know, does not usually exceed 21 days. Even in, in fact, few days or weeks. And then what will happen is that it starts with fever, um, headaches, sore throat, intense body pain, and tiredness, extreme tiredness. A few days after rashes will appear, usually around the face, the rashes then spread down and to the trunk. So, and then the rashes has peculiar characteristics. It initially flat, it becomes raised, it has water inside, it forms pus, and then bursts, and then forms crust. Um, and then, uh, interestingly, people who are in close contact with themselves are actually likely to transmit this virus from one person to another. So you have to have adverse body fluid, close contact, keep distance with people. The disease is usually very mild, especially the um, West African clade, because there's a Congo clade, which is even more severe. The West African clade is actually mild, one in 10 fatality. But when it affects children, pregnant two men, and people that are immunocompromised, then it becomes a problem. So um, that's the general knowledge about it. So of course, what are we supposed to do? We still have to come back to the protocol of the, of the uh, preventive me mechanisms. So, um, some gaps, you know, avoid contact with uh, wild animals as much as possible. If you have rashes, contact wild animals, or even, contact, even eating, others. yes, either eating, you know. either using them, you know, either eating them or their body fluid, or if you see somebody that is sick and have rashes, also give gaps. Wash your hand as as we used to uh, preach during the COVID, you know, and keep some distance. Inform doctors when you have reasons to suspect anything that is wrong with you. So these are just the basic things. Now, um, we're looking at vaccines against it, but even Nigeria is not even having COVID vaccine. We did not have monkeypox vaccine. Of course, it's the smallpox vaccine that's still a bit effective against it. So the best we can do is to still stay without the precedent of saying, how do we prevent monkeypox? How do we identify? How do we increase surveillance? You know, we have to increase the knowledge. That's where we are for now. Well, so, the official government reports. I mean, first you have said that um, we need to get to the non-pharmaceutical methods of washing your hands, respecting social distancing. But you've also mentioned the fact that there's a tendency that it might be, you had said that it might just be, you know, an intercourse. It might be sexually transmitted. I really don't know where all of that is. But there's a school of thought that's saying that um, there are official government reports that suggest authorities are using monkeypox to cover up, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine that could have actually caused the acquired immunodeficiency, you know, syndrome. What well, do you make of this? Well, um, if you look at the number of COVID vaccines... And been... that's why you have it in Sweden, because you've mentioned that, okay, you well, understand that it's in the UK, United States, but in other countries, you don't understand. And people are saying that it might just um, be the vaccine. You see, we, we, we cannot be subjecting ourselves to speculations that are not scientific. Fallacy comes in different forms, okay? And... In fact, association is not the same thing as causation. We, we have to, you know, science is a strict thinking methodology that we, we use to interrogate things. Now, if you look at, you deploy how many uh, COVID-19 vaccines, billions of COVID-19 vaccines worldwide, billions. And then, what why you are seeing 16 cases of, of um, monkeypox, okay? 16 cases or thereabouts, um, maybe five, less than 500 cases worldwide. And you have deployed billions of these vaccines of COVID-19 vaccines, how do you now account that you're having just small, you know, cases of monkeypox from large number, after giving large number of COVID vaccines? They don't, they don't correlate. And then look at it, even the one in Canada, we can have a trace. Even the, the new one in May, in May 7th in UK came to Nigeria, <laughs> okay, where, where monkeypox is endemic. Um, I think we should discontinue those kind of, um, of um, uh, fallacy until we have really proof that there's a linkage. Um, uh, 12 countries, because you are also worried about the statistics. We're looking at 12 countries. Let me, let, 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 me, let me tell you, um, 
we, diseases don't read book. <laughs> Tell, let's get it. Diseases don't read book. This is not say that because you say I appear here, I appear here, I become like this. It's book that reads diseases. When we find new patterns, mm. we ask questions, we look through it. We find, could there be any other means of these things? Was this thing actually in that society, you know, subdued, running, and then we're having little outbreak? Without, because people are not actually looking for monkeypox when they are doing checking in that society. Could it be such that it's, it's really running the society, in, 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 the, in the community, and then now we're having little, little outbreaks? You know? Could they have brought that one from some country far in the past, and then now? Is it that a new virus has mutated, and, you know, a new mitral form mutated to, to, to give this kind of symptom? There are, there are a lot of questions to us. We cannot do conjecture. I feel that because you've seen it in 60 countries, uh, this number of 100 cases or so there, but and then that means that COVID vaccine is related to it. You know, there's been a lot of um, uh, fallacies surrounding COVID vaccine that it's been difficult, very difficult, especially with the social media, very difficult to let people flow with the main thinking. Okay. Scientific thinking is not, is not an easy talk, thinking process. Right. So, so, so you're saying that, you know, um, we don't know whether, whether this is the original monkeypox virus strain that we're used to, or this is something new. We have to wait. We, we, we know that it is actually the West Africa type, okay? How did it get there? That's the question. Why are we seeing it for the first time in a place like Sweden or Belgium or Switzerland? Without any link to Africa. Yeah, yeah for, we, got, we, got, we cannot establish link to Africa now. Oh. Could it have been the, that the virus became, you know, uh, quiet, you know, inside somebody's body and then broke out now? Why are we seeing it more in people, men having sex with men or gay, you know, homosexual? Why are we seeing it more in them? These are interrogations. You, you know, in reality, when, when uh, HIV first came, that was how it, 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 it broke. You know, you are seeing it more. In fact, it became, you know, an issue of stigma. And then we have to be very careful not to stigmatize those people because, you know, uh, we observe that kind of thing. It could actually be the, because they are also very thorough in trying to look at the, after their health. So... Now, all the facts you put on the table, but you have to put the pieces together. And you don't put the pieces together by conjectures, by you know, pushing fallacy, by looking at um, you know, uh, association as a source of causation. So we, we need to be a bit careful and wait for the further scientific evidence that will help us unravel why this is. But while we're waiting for that, we have to increase our surveillance, we have to wash our hands, we have to do social distances. We have to really, really, you know, raise our nutrition and eat very well. That is where we are. To increase and your then, immunity. Yes, and then, okay. of course, think about the climate. If you mess up climate, climate you mess us up. And that's why we see a lot of diseases being thrown at us randomly because nobody respects the environment again. We just think that we can do anything. So, I mean, it, it, it comes for serious, deep conversation about the interaction between health, environment, and the, inter the connection of humanity, especially in this area of high mobility. All right. mobility. Uh, Dr. Tu here, yeah. um, for, for, for someone who talked about the symptoms, you know, um, because of course the awareness for the public is important. This is where we have 3,000 cases mm. a year. Mm. And it's not something that, that causes panic in, in Nigeria. I mean, I didn't even know <laughs> we had 3,000 cases a year. <laughs> but it's an issue, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pressing issue. And this is another opportunity to, to inform the public. So when you, 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 you realize you have some of these symptoms, so anyone who sees that he has the headache you talked about and all that, can you please go over the symptoms again? And what um, anyone who shows such symptoms is expected to do? Where should they go? What should they do first before they even get to where they should go to? Ah, well, um, simply put, is all varieties is produce what we call constitutional symptoms, you know, um, your headache, sore throat, um, body ache, intense weakness. These are some of the things that you see. Um, until the rash appears, you would think it's just malaria or anything. So we tend to gloss over a lot of symptoms because it sounds, it feels like malaria. Because it feels like we think it's malaria and then we then use anti-malaria drug. But again, once you are using anti-malaria drug, you are not seeing the requisite response. Please. And then again, normally adults, you are supposed to even do a malaria test before you, before you start using the malaria medication. So once you are using that, and then suddenly you find a rash appearing on the, the, usually on the face first, then the rash will flat initially, there's water inside it, it becomes pus, it breaks and it forms crust and fell off. So the rash will not spread centrally, it goes from faces 
down to the abdomen. So when you start noticing one, two, three, four rashes in any part of your body that is swollen up like that to the water inside, and you are having fever, headache, and extreme tiredness, it becomes important for you to seek the assistance of a doctor or, you know, a health people. And then uh, who can then be able to take and decide what to do? And of course, unfortunately, there's no definitive cure for, for monkeypox. We still have to rely on treating the constitutional symptoms, what we call symptomatic treatment. And after that, um, you know, you, if the vaccine is available, you give the vaccine and some antiviral drugs if they are available. But of course, um, they may not be available. And then the cheapest thing still for us is to prevent, is to prevent. Um, you are doing a lot of awareness now. You are telling people, people should try to listen. <laughs> there can't be, there, there's no money for a dead person. Okay? There's no political post for a dead person. Health has been subjected to, has been pushed to the periphery in the thinking of Nigerians. But these are really, really big issue. Health issues had closed down the economy. Health issues had led to the fall of government. Oh, even in their, in, the, in their holy books, health issues led to the fall of government in Egypt. So we, we need to put some attention to health in this part of the world. And unfortunately, we are challenged with human resources for health. No doctors, no nurses, lab is not there. And we just down on the grace of it is where, it is where, it is where. Well, well, well we have more it's than be no well. doctors. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be well, but <laughs> when ourselves person gets to the grave. So honestly, that is the thing. Be observant. Love your body. Do what you call embodiment. Feel your body and say, how am I feeling today? What could be wrong with me? And then have a phone, a, 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 a number of a, a medical health, health personnel you can call. Of course, in a country like this now, which is actually in a chaos, you know, the country is in a chaos, everything is just, that is why in a chaos, everything is normal, everything is abnormal, because there are no rules, there are no order, anything you do is okay in a chaos. So Nigeria, you know, is, can, has not really escaped the beginning that was, that was chaos in the Bible. We have not escaped the beginning. So that's why you see that, you see, everything happening, nobody, no direction. And when there's no direction, disease will also manifest itself, and everything will come. So, let us focus and be able to talk seriously about what is important, our health. Yeah. Well, quick, quickly, as, as we just uh, try to move away from this conversation now, we know that there's chicken pox and some of these similarities that you have mentioned, you know, with monkey pox, it feels like it's the same thing with chicken pox. And for those also persons who have acne, at what point do you now differentiate? Yeah, yeah, you know, the indeed. difference between very, acne and Very interesting. Chicken. Yeah, very, that's a very important question. Most of the time, don't try to act like a doctor by going to online and try to read things of, oh, it must be this, it must be that. I remember the, what we call the medical student syndrome, those days in medicine. When we enter clinic, and they teach us about one thing. They say, ah, that is what is wrong with me. But what, is, what happens with, this, with, this, with the rashes of the, of the chicken pox is that, of the monkey pox is that, one, is bigger. Mm -hmm. and, and it progresses, and it's bigger from flat, raised, water inside, pulse inside, breaks. You know, and then it's, it, it, it spreads centrally from head down to the abdomen and then it goes to the arms. But in reality, the other, uh, in smallpox, the, the, the rashes are smaller. They are smaller and they have a peculiar characteristic in between them. You know, in between those things, when you look in between those uh, um, rashes, they are clear characteristics that distinguish them. So it's similar to what we've seen on, this, on the screen. This is a, this is a monkey pox now. Okay. Okay, you can see that it's bigger. You know, the space between them is actually you know a bit uh, you know um, wider. Right. But in, in smallpox, the spaces are actually compacted and they're smaller, and then they they, they don't commonly form those kind of crust that we've seen. So the chicken pox only can even form more crust in a way and, and destroy the skin. But what is important is that the distinction can only be made by a health practitioner. You can you can't stay here. I'm telling you, you can't stay here and know the difference. Because it is there we were taught the tiny details of what is a chicken pox, what is a small pox, and what a monkey pox looks like. All right. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Tui uh, Meba Wondu. Um, it's been quite interesting hearing from you. Um, a bit worrying hearing that one in ten persons die, like you said, 
uh, from uh, uh, monkeypox. But we're grateful for the information. Um, I think for me, uh, one of the takeaways from what you said is we need to be very careful, continue to practice the safe uh, measures that we had with COVID will still help us with this. And also work on, on boosting our immunity because if you are immuno, immunodeficient is a term you used, then that's one of the ways you can be uh, um, susceptible to, to this, this virus. To a lot of diseases. Okay, a lot of diseases. All right, thank you very much for your time. And uh, uh, that's so much you can take on this segment of The Breakfast. We'll be back and when we return, we'll look at uh, the Monetary Policy Committee increasing the NPR to 13% the first time in some years. This has been pegged up. What's going on? Stay with us.